Welcome to the Scamp. This is going to be a winter tour. Keep in mind that everything is in slightly different spots and we have different things in here in the summer. For all the gear and different items we have in here, we will have links in the description below. So if you're looking for any of that, jump down below the video. FYI, if you hear Camp in the background, he's been having some issues. He stepped on a cactus while running after a rabbit and now he's a little bit uncomfortable. So for a quick overhead tour, we have our guest bedroom, our heat source, our kitchenette, the master bedroom, and our pantry. Our things are organized in a frequency of use hierarchy, which determines each item's level of accessibility. The hierarchy scale ranges from easiest to relatively inaccessible. So the things that we use multiple times a day aren't behind any sort of drawer or anything, they're just out in the open. And then things that we use seasonally are buried under the bed, for example. We'll start with our guest bedroom. Up here, we have our headlamps, Elsa's fanny pack, and a hatchet that we always keep handy. We have our hats, and we use our hats as a storage compartment for all of our buffs and gloves and other beanies and stuff. And then we have a sunlight made by BioLite. This is our little reading light that we keep up there. It has a solar panel on the back of it. It's an awesome, fully adjustable light. This is our adjustable chair. We got this recently to try to help our backs since we spend a lot of time in this camp in the winter. It's working all right. Here we have our hand mirrors, which are super handy. This is just a really nice hodgepodge area to store stuff. So a lot of times when my big lens is on my camera, for example, that'll go back here and just, we kind of throw whatever needs to be stored away back here. We have our smaller power station. This is a 500 watt hour or 0.5 kilowatt hour power station. It could charge a 100 watt hour laptop like a MacBook Pro about five times. And we keep this on the bench so that whenever one of us is working over here, we have power accessible for on our laptops or iPads. This is a foam roller that folds flat, which is super nice for us because we're so starved for space. And it pulls into a full on foam roller that's super strong. I can stand on this and it holds me up. This is our wood bin for the wood stove. We're using these compressed sawdust briquettes this year and they work pretty well. I think the company is BioBlocks. The compressed logs that we had last year burned a little bit longer and maybe a little bit cleaner even, but these are the best fuel source that we have available nearby. Behind that, we have our fruit bin. And we eat a lot of oranges in the winter. I guess the vitamin C for your runny nose and all that. This is our iPad holder and even phone holder. So you can set it up so that the iPad will just hover in front of your face. And I use this if I'm playing games on my iPad or if we're recording podcasts and stuff, we use this to hold the iPad up so it can float wherever we want. And then we have our bungee cords and we use these in front of our drawers because without them, they just slide open when we move. And a simple cutting board that we don't actually use as a cutting board, we use it as extra hard top space. So if Elsa is crafting or doing those things on the bed, it's just a nice place to set things. So underneath, we have our moderately accessible storage. And here we have our trash bin. And we keep chip bags and just spare plastic bags and use those as our trash containers. And a bag this size will last us one to two weeks. We keep all of our spare ones back here. And then we have camp food here. We have our fire extinguisher, extra shoes, Elsa's mucklucks, and our blender. This is just a magic bullet and we use this primarily for grinding coffee and it pulls like 150 watts in a quick burst. Oh, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Under the bench we have our slightly less accessible things. On this side we have all of our tools. This is Probably the most useful tool kit that we've had. We've had this ever since we moved into this camp. It's the simplest tool kit that Ikea sells for like $5. But since we don't use our tools super often, this has lasted us a long time. And maybe sometime we could dive more into the tool things, but I don't want to bore everybody in this video with all that. So if you want to dig into tools more, let me know and we can do that sometime. 
On the opposite side, under the stove, we have our sort of kitchen extras. So extra spices, toilet paper, and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of a catch-all bin as well. Oh, one more thing that we have under there is our electric heater. And we use it almost never, but if we do have power available, it's a super nice thing to have so that we don't have to deal with the stove. Speaking of the wood stove, this is our Cubic Mini Cub. It is the smallest stove that they make, and it's pretty excellent. The Grizzly is slightly bigger and has a little bit bigger burning box and a slightly larger hole in the front, which would be really nice because processing wild wood down small enough to fit in this box is sometimes really difficult but it's a lot easier with the bio blocks that we have. This is a carbon monoxide detector, which is really important, especially when you're burning wood. We have three different tools for our stove. First is the hook. We use this all the time, way more than either of the other tools. We use the scoop whenever we need to clean the soot out of the bottom, which is maybe once every two weeks or so. And then we have these guys, which are really cute, but almost useless. On top of the wood stove, we have our eco fan, and this works on the Seebeck effect. So there's a little Seebeck tile in here, and the difference in temperature between this top radiator and the bottom plate generates electricity, which spins the fan. It's awesome technology, and I would love to take a bunch of these little Seebeck tiles and put them all over the side of the stove to see if we could make electricity off the stove. But someday. <laughs> Behind the wood stove, we have all of our indoor miniature cooking supplies. We have our trusty stained stainless steel Stanley. And this was our first cook pot that we ever bought. We used it on the BioLite for a long time. What is this called? Mocha pot. Then we have our mocha pot. And this guy has been super clutch on the wood stove. It makes sort of an espresso. So we'll warm up some water and coffee at the same time and make enough coffee for, for both of us. Then we have our micro cast iron. And then we have our little ceramic pot with a lid. This is the kitchenette. How we got this kitchenette was kind of a sad story, um, but it's functional for now. Should I leave it at that? I should probably just leave it at that. First up, we have our little tray and utensils holder that we got from Ikea. This was one of the first things that we ever got when we moved into the scamp, and it's worked great ever since. For our utensils, we use pretty much all metal or stainless steel utensils. And then in this tray, we keep little odds and ends, like sunglasses, my tobacco pipe, a little thing that I whittled for this guy, which we'll get to in a second. To the left of that, we have our GoPro, and we keep him super handy because we use it often. And then this little GoPro light that we got recently. And then we have this hook made out of gear ties. You'll notice that there's a gear tie theme in all of this because they're one of my favorite things. That's where we hang our keys in this little MSR scrubber, which is absolutely incredible. If I was gonna move into any nomadic rig or even a house, this MSR scrubber would be one of the first things I would get. And then we have our kitchen light. This BioLight was initially a sort of bag light that diffused the light in all directions, but I MacGyvered it into a little directional light and we love it this way. And then it's attached with more gear ties. Here we have our main power station. This is a Goal Zero Yeti 1000 lithium. So it has a lithium battery inside. It has a solar controller, an inverter, and all of the different peripheral ports built in. And it also has an input and output that you can switch through amps or watts or volts. And this has been super helpful for us to learn how solar works. And we normally have it strictly on watts because watts account for both amps and volts. So there's no ambiguity when you're measuring things in watts and watt hours. This is the power port for our WeBoost. It's the RV65 model, which is a directional cell booster. So we have to actually point it at the cell tower. And we use an app called OpenSignal to identify exactly where the cell tower is. It works great, but it pulls about 9 watts when it's on. Below that, we always have two USB fans plugged in. One up high and then one down low to keep the air circulating in here so that we don't get a bunch of condensation and stuff. It kind of balances the temperature of the air throughout the scamp. And then here we have our Wi-Fi hotspot. It's by Unlimitedville, and it's actually unlimited and no throttling. We're on the AT&T network, even though it has slightly less coverage than Verizon, because there's less competition on it, they normally have more bandwidth available to allocate to users. Even though AT&T doesn't always have the best signal, a lot of times we get even higher bandwidth than our friends that have Verizon. 
This is our BioLite base lantern. It has a built-in lithium battery, so it is what powers our other lights that we have strung up around the scamp, including the kitchen light that I just showed you. It has a little input port, which is micro USB and two output USB ports. You can actually use this as a charging station too, which is super clutch. It's dimmable and it's a full spectrum light, so you can choose between a whole rainbow of colors. And we normally keep it on this sort of red light because it's really nice at night and it's uh, easy on the eyes and doesn't ruin your night vision. We have the sight light minis strung up around the bed and then this kitchen light and they're both toggleable and powered by this guy which is awesome. This has been the only light system that we've ever had in the scamp and it's absolutely ideal. We wouldn't trade it for anything else. Up on the side here we have our extra fan that I was telling you about and a gridded system where we keep all of our peripheral charging cords. In our upper pantry, we have a lot of things. In this little guy, we have a bunch of spare electronics things. We have a bunch of tapes and glues and different adhesives to fix things. And then we have a bunch of salves and eye drops and chapstick and extra lighters and things of that nature. Under that, we have a first aid kit. And then over here, we have a bunch of vitamins and supplements and all of our spices. We have our famous frother that everyone seems to love. Here we have all of our teas. We have lots of different teas. Elsa is a tea queen. To the right of that, we have drinks and mushroom powders and things of that nature. All the things that we mix into our cacaos and different drinks that you see in all of our videos. To the right of that, we have coffee. And we pre-grind our coffee, sorry about it, but it makes it a lot easier so else it doesn't wake me up in the morning. Here we have our homemade Zumbutt, which is a bidet in a bottle that uh, works to clean butts. It's made out of witch hazel, essential oils, and vitamin E oil. Under that, we have our baby wipes. And a little pro tip, you can rip baby wipes into halves or thirds and get a lot more mileage out of them. So, try that. Continuing with the pantry vibe, we have our main pantry. We have Elsa's craft supplies, which have recently overflowed into this section, which works great and I'm okay with it. Below that, we have our Berkey. This is our water filter. It's excellent, highly recommended. We have cacao, some coconut oil, all of our powders and like powdered supplements. So we always have greens powder and typically protein powder we just ran out but they're great, especially in the winter when healthier foods are a little bit more difficult to come by. Next to the Berkey, we have all of our sauces and oils and things of that nature. Behind that, we have a bunch of canned meats, like the Wild Planet canned chicken and sardines, which are super nice for our lifestyle since we don't have a fridge. Underneath here, we have different pastas and soups and just different kinds of carbs, primarily. Some bone broth, mac and cheese, we've sort of rediscovered lately, which has been nice. Here we have our trowel that is based on a Japanese design and it works great. You can dig through even frozen ground really well. And this is dirt, so please don't be concerned. Then we have our Peak Designs tripod. Quick review of this. It's a great travel tripod. It's not quite as strong as I would like. And the fact that you always have to have a hex wrench with you whenever you're adjusting it or changing out tripod heads is a little ridiculous to me. It has a spot on the tripod to hold your hex wrench, but it's not super secure, so ours fell out a long time ago. Beyond that, it's a great tripod. It's too expensive, but uh, works great. Here we have our wood flute. Thank you, Reed. We love this thing. It's an awesome flute. Next to that, we have our water jug. We have two six gallon water jugs. We like these and we keep using them because they fit behind the seats in our car and it turns out to be a great amount of water for us. Recently, we've been going to town about once a week and our 12 gallons of water with a little bit of supplementary water in our MSR bladder lasts us through the week really well. We keep the water jug inside the scamp because if we leave it out overnight, it'll freeze. Here we have our two tray tables. This is just a basic tray table and this one is a fully adjustable desk. Here is our Yeti 20 cooler. We have a cooler instead of a fridge just because it eliminates complexity and really we only need a fridge in a few months of the year in like the hottest parts of summer. In the summer months we will use 
like kombucha or different cold drinks to keep the cooler cold and we almost never buy ice. We also use evaporative cooling on occasion and we have a video on that that we'll link in the cards. Now for the lower part of the kitchenette. First, we have this shoddily made desk drawer that we've improved slightly and it works okay. I quickly carved this little piece of wood to wedge under here so it doesn't slide in and out when you're working on it and it makes it slightly more usable. This is what it looks like. It's a junk drawer and we will leave it at that. Below that, we have our sort of bathroom things, extra towels, extra sheets, all of our soaps and essential oils and lotion. Here are all of my clothes. I have two Melanzana hoodies, a flannel, extra socks. All of my boxers are made by Ex Officio. They're the give and go boxers. They're absolutely excellent. My bathroom kit, a rain jacket, an extra flannel, and a swimsuit in case we go to the hot springs. And that's about it for winter clothes. Next to that, we have all of our electronics, our GoPros, headphones, tripod, microphones, extra lenses, and our drone, and then some extra electronic stuff in the back there. This is another thing that we could geek out on for hours in another video, so if you're interested in seeing all the stuff that we use to film all of our videos, let us know. This is Elsa's clothing drawer. She has almost the exact same clothes that I do. And then you also have a full kit of Bronwyn underwear, which is all Merino base layers for women, and they're excellent. Down here we have Camp's water and food bowl and one of the extra fans that I was talking about. We have all of our Reflectix window covers, and these are absolutely essential for keeping warm air in and cold air out. This is our overflow non-perishable foods section and some snowboarding gear and that's pretty much all that we keep under the bed. You're okay, we'll give you all the attention when we finish. Now move up to the bed. And this is our epic new bed. In our renovation video, we replaced the mattress with one that you can actually sleep through the night on, which has been a wonderful welcome to bonus in the scamp. On top of that, we have a basic pair of sheets, my black comforter that I've had since like high school. And then we have a really nice merino wool blanket. So we layer our bed just about like we layer our bodies. And then we have a down puffy blanket made by Go Rumple that goes on top of all that. During the day, we generally keep our backpacks on the bed to free up space on the bench. And then at night, we swap the backpacks over to the bench while we sleep and we keep them up off the ground because they have electronics in them and if you get lithium batteries cold, they generally like plummet in their charge. Here we have Camp's jacket and our ukulele. And then we actually just did this yesterday and it works perfectly for all of our plates and cups. Great work, Elsa. And then you may have noticed, but everywhere around the scamp that there's a spare spot, we have hooks hung up and we'll just put our layers of clothing up on those hooks <laughs> to dry them out or air them out. I ordered this map when we did the scamp renovation and I think it's awesome. It's a map of the Rocky Mountain region of Colorado. So it's fun whenever we're in Colorado to be able to see exactly where we are and the different 14ers around and trails and everything. On either side underneath the bed, we have our least accessible storage. And this is primarily off-season gear and stuff that we almost never access. On this side, it's mostly like sports equipment and camping equipment, like snowboarding gear and climbing gear. This dry deck has been excellent for airflow underneath the bed so it doesn't condensate because these don't get access to the hot air. On this side, we have all of our off-season clothes and they're stored in dry bags so that they don't mold if they do get wet. Lastly, we have emergency food under here for winter just in case we get snowed in and because the world's been in a pretty tumultuous place lately. Okay, I think that's it for inside. You wanna take over? Yep, let's go outside. Welcome to the outside of the scamp. This I would call our kitchen part one and the inside is our kitchen part two because this is our main kitchen. 
that we use even in the winter time. Coleman stove, we have a mini propane tank. We keep all of our cooking gear outside. Things like our cutting board, our cast iron, we have one pot, a cooking knife, and some extra food containers for food storage. In the bin below it, the shallow bin, this is a lot of outdoor gear that we don't access ever. It's got like an outdoor blanket, some steaks, a tarp, just some kind of spare things in case we have some special needs for some special adventure. In the bin next to it, this is where we keep all of our wood that is not inside the scamp. And in the summertime, we keep the entire cubic mini within this bin. Our table is a standard lifetime table from Walmart, I think. It adjusts to all kinds of different heights, and that's really nice, but being a white table, full-time outside, a cook table, it's really, really hard to keep clean. So it just kind of looks pretty gnarly all the time, but it works very well. We have two basic lawn chairs and a small kind of coffee-like table. It's really nice to sit outside in the summer. Baron will sit outside in the winter, but I sit inside in the winter. We have a 100 watt panel and a 50 watt panel, and these have been plenty to charge our 1500 watt hour capacity of batteries inside the scamp. The charge cord is always attached inside of the scamp and leaves about one foot on the outside of the scamp for us to attach a second cord to, to plug into the panels. And we also have a very, very, very long cord that we'll use in times when we're parked in the shade, like in the summertime. It lowers the amount of input that the panels bring into the batteries, but it's better than getting no power at all. This is our WeBoost pull. You can see it in most of our videos. It does a great job at boosting our cell service when we're camped really far out in the backcountry. Like Baron said, it's a directional cell booster and it's attached to a 25 foot telescoping pole. Underneath the scamp, we store our chairs when we're not using them, as well as the bike rack. And maybe some other things in the summer. Baron put together a really awesome video about the Subaru and why we tow with the Subaru Forester. If you want to check that out, I will leave that in the description and in a card as well. Baron just installed these off-brand Max tracks for if we happen to get stuck in the snow or in sand or in mud. Hopefully we never have to use them. Ooh, you cleaned. Within the car, we always store our recycling container. We store one of our kayaks inside the car and the other one up top in our rooftop carrier. We also have a video on that. Right now we have some spare dog food in the car and some oil and coolant, right? Mm. We always keep extra oil and coolant in case we need to top them off. This is where I store all of my tools for the car. I know what all of them are and I'm not gonna bore you with it. We could get into that in a different video. What is this? <laughs> We've got an extra battery for jump starting the car. We've never had to use it, thank goodness. And then back here, some extra cables for when we put our Goal Zero batteries into the back of the car. We can charge it with the power of the car. That's really the bulk of the storage for inside the car. And then we've got all of our outdoor gear up top in the rooftop carrier, this has become like a garage. It is insane how much stuff this holds. As we continue to live this way, we pick up more and more sports that we're into. So then we collect more and more gear. So this has been really nice to kind of have a place to store all of that extra stuff. We hope that you have enjoyed this winter tour video of the Skimp. If you have any requests for deeper dive things you'd like us to geek out on more, please leave them in the comments below. And we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. All of our things are organized in our frequency. No, not like that. <laughs>